Hey guys, and welcome back. Well, it's time for a full workflow video today, right? So we're gonna be doing a Volkswagen hubcap, uh, but that's not the most important part. The most important part is the process. And as you guys requested, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be doing some modeling in Maya. We're gonna be UVing in Maya. We're gonna be creating an alpha image uh, in Photoshop so we can apply that in ZBrush. We're also gonna do the Z remesh. And then finally, we're gonna texture in Substance Painter. Here we go. Okay guys, well, we're in Maya 2018, as you can see, and uh, I've been asked to do a full workflow video. So you want to see everything. You want to see the modeling process, you want to see the UVing, you want to see the remeshing, you want to see the color ID map, you want to see the texturing, uh, the whole nine yards. Now that means one of two things, either the video will become very long or I'll take an object that is very simple. And uh, now I kind of figure that you want to see the process, not necessarily the model. So I'm going to go with something that's pretty simple. So we're going to do a Volkswagen uh, hubcap, Volkswagen, Volkswagen, however you pronounce that, right? So I'm going to start with a, uh, a cylinder, pretty simple. We're gonna click on that. I'm gonna hit Control A to open up the attribute editor. And let's set the caps to three. It looks all right. And then I'm gonna right click at a face and I'm gonna drag select these faces here. Let me try that again. Yeah, drag select these faces. Shift drag select these. So I just have the bottom one selected. Hit delete and make sure that I didn't delete anything else, which is fine. We're gonna to go to Vertex. I'm gonna drag select those, push that up, something like this. And then we're gonna go in, right click, go to Edge, double click on that top edge, go to Edit Mesh and Bevel. Let's uh, maximize that fraction and then we'll, we will increase segments. And I think for a low poly model, this should be fine. So we'll leave it at that. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna go into face, jump to our top view, come on, top view, yeah. And we're gonna drag select these faces and then hit shift period to increase that, okay. We're gonna control E to extrude. Let's hit W to pull that up like this, okay. And then we're gonna go in, hit Q on a keyboard, right click edge, double click, edit mesh, bevel, increase that fraction again, and then increase segments. And I would say that is about it, okay? Now, if we select this guy and hit three to preview smooth, you'll see it looks perfectly smooth. We'll hit one to go back. We're not gonna do that just yet uh, because this is a low poly, but we are gonna go to edge, drag select, and go to, where'd he go, where'd he go? Soften edge, okay? Which already helps a lot. Now, this guy needs to be UV'd. This is pretty straightforward. We're gonna go up to UV. I'll make sure I got it selected in object mode. Okay, UV, we're gonna go to automatic projection in this case. And then we're gonna to go to UV and UV editor. Let's just minimize that. Okay, so we got a bunch of stuff going on here. And let's see if this is the most appropriate method to uh, UV this. Hopefully you can see it okay. Now, I'm not unhappy with this. I think it's okay. A um, Couple of things we can do here. So we've got that top projection going on here and we've got this inner circle and we've got those edges. So let's clean that up a little bit, all right? So I'm gonna right click and go to UV shell and you can see that I got some parts going on there and some missing parts. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna right click at an edge. What I'll actually do is I'll select UV shell, I'm select all of it. I'm gonna right click, go to cut and sew and do move and sew. So everything is now stitched together. So I can start from scratch, okay? I'm gonna select it again. I'm gonna right click and go to modify and layout. So it will kind of stretch that out properly. And I'm also gonna go into modify and unfold. So we get a nice round surface, all right? So where do I want this to be cut? I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna double click on this edge right there. So it will show up here as well. 
right click and go to cut and sew and click on cut so now I have a separate UV shell here and I got one here now I got those edges going down there so you can kind of um, think about whether you want that or not let's say you don't so we'll go in here and I'm gonna go to this one and let's right click and go to cut and sew and cut and then we'll hit Q on our keyboard and we'll go in here and we'll do the same here right click cut and sew and cut so now if we go to UV shell we got one we got two we got three and we got four okay so well uh, I think that will work just fine it does have to be uh, properly uh, positioned in our zero to one space and you can see it's a bit too big right now so I'm gonna right click go to UV shell direct click all of it hit R and slightly bring that in until it's fitting inside the uh, parameters of our zero to one space so you got this little green line here and the red line here you want everything to be in this quadrant okay now that looks all fine so um, what I'm gonna do is uh, export this as my low poly now keep in mind that if I wanted to have different textures going on on this guy um, let's say in um, substance painter I would add a different material to it right now and in fact because this is about the process let me just do that right so what I'll do is I'll select this and this and I'm gonna right click and go to assign new material let's do a Lambert doesn't really matter what color we'll just uh, put some color on it let's do red and by doing so um, this will be identified as two um, shading groups in substance painter one for this one and one for that one right so um, that's how that works so we're gonna close that up this is now UV'd I'm gonna go to object mode drag select all of it I'm gonna go to edit delete by type history I'm gonna go to modify and freeze transformation there you have it and then I'm gonna go up to file export selection I'm gonna go to my desktop uh, let me think uh, Volkswagen yeah there you go and I'll call this uh, low poly underscore hub all right let's save that out and let's uh, jump in to Photoshop and I'll tell you why in a second okay Right, guys well we're in uh, Photoshop as you can see and I go in here I'm gonna move this to black and there you go and I'm just gonna flip those two and then I'm gonna hit control delete to make my background black so now we're gonna bring in uh, uh, the logo okay so I'm gonna go to file and uh, place embedded and uh, let's see I want to yeah go to Volkswagen here you go so that's the logo now you can make it as big or small as you want uh, we'll do this right here problem is I want the blue bits to be black as well uh, because I need to use this as an alpha okay so I'm gonna hit the uh, enter to bring that in so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to uh, image adjustments and let's see I'm gonna turn this to black and white and there you have it and then we're gonna tweak this because I want the background to be black there you have it just by throwing all those sliders over so this is gonna work fine I'm gonna go up to uh, file and uh, save as and I'm just gonna save this as a JPEG in my Volkswagen folder and I'll just call this uh, alpha VW okay I'm gonna save that out hit OK and now we can go and jump into ZBrush here we go all right here we are so we're gonna go to um, import I'm gonna look for my uh, Volkswagen folder uh, right there and we're gonna take our low poly and open that up I'm gonna left click and drag there you go and then I'm gonna go in to uh, edit and I'm gonna click on make polymesh 3d I'm gonna just uh, flip that into place just by holding shift and holding shift there you go as you can see it's uh, quite low poly but that's fine 
we're going to do next is we're going to go and um, turn on P for perspective. That's just something I have a preference for. And if we turn on this guy, you can see what our edge flow looks like. Now we get a bunch of triangles here. That's not bad per se, but I uh, personally like to have um, a little bit different layout. So I'm going to go to uh, geometry uh, up here. I'm going to go to uh, Z remesher and I'm going to bump that up to somewhere around 20. And then I'm going to click on Z remesher. And you can see very different flow there. And uh, instead of having those triangles, it's now uh, more squares or you know quads. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to uh, geometry again and I'm just going to divide it. And now I'm at 71K. I'm just going to turn this off. 71K. We're going to go up to about, well, that's a bit much. That's 4 million, but it should be okay. But if I turn this on, you can see it's very dense. Now, why am I doing that? Uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I want to use my alpha to put that logo in here, and I want a nice uh, tessellation. And I want to kind of smooth this out and um, you know add some uh, dings to it and whatnot so um, let's start by smoothing this let's see what our brush is doing right now okay let's go back the intensity let's bring that back a little hold down the shift key and just go over that area right there and I'm basically just smoothing that out okay now again keep in mind this is pretty low poly so that's fine then next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to my brushes here and I'm going to look for my trim dynamic uh, which is right there and I'm going to go in and kind of ding this thing up a little bit and depending on how much you want to do that you know after all it's a hubcap so I'll bring down that intensity a bit And now I'm going to smooth it a bit more. Let's just uh, bump that up a bit. I mean, this thing is from the 70s, so it's beaten up pretty bad, right? This thing has been everywhere. And again, you know, process, right? Okay. So let's say we're happy with that for now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hold on shift. We're going to snap it so it's uh, nice and straight here. And then we're going to go in and we're going to look for our alpha. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on import. And this is the one we want to use. Okay. We're going to go in here. We're going to, instead of uh, this uh, trim dynamic, we're going to use our standard brush. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna use this square, okay? Now we're gonna start somewhere around here. We're okay, so we have uh, a right brush, we've got the rectangle and we got our alpha. Let's try and get this positioned uh, spot on. Let's do something like this. We're gonna left click and drag. That's not too far off. It's not perfectly in the middle either. Let me try that one more time. Okay, again, you know, not perfect, but I'll, I'll, I'll go with it, all right? Maybe make it a bit smaller. Yep, yeah, that's what we're going to go with. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it looks, it looks okay. Now, we can smooth that a little bit if you want. Um, if you think it's a bit too rough, just hold on that shift key. We can just uh, 
you know, smooth out those areas. And even if you want, you can take that trim dynamic and go in and kind of, you know, tweak those edges. You know, again, you know, this is old. It's it's been on there for a while. All right. Now let's say that that's done. Now what I like to do is to add some noise to it, just to kind of camouflage anything that doesn't look too great, especially when you're doing something low poly or fast. So what I'll do here is I'll go to surface and we'll just bring this down right there surface. We're going to go to light box noise makers and I've used this one before this, uh, this one don't know, don't mind the color. Just going to double click on it and you can see that that makes our object very rough. Now it's way too rough of course. So what I'm going to do is go into edit. And what we're going to do is we're going to tweak that strength a bit. So you can uh, bring that down and we should be looking at this guy, not there. Uh, let's see. Just want to see this properly. Okay. So, okay. We're going to bump that up. We're going to bring that strength in a bit. Okay, so that's the range we're at. And then we got this guy, we got our skill, which is kind of important. Play with that a little bit. And then we got our noise skill here. Okay, we'll leave it like that. We're gonna hit okay. Now keep in mind, it's very important that you click on apply to mesh. If you don't do that, nothing will happen, all right? Okay, so let's say this is our high poly mesh and it's done. We're gonna turn off our light box. I'm gonna go up and export this. So we're gonna go to our uh, sub tool. Here it is. We're gonna select this guy. We're gonna go to export and let's call this high poly underscore hub and save that up. Let's give that a second. Okay guys, now it's time for us to take this into Substance Painter. Here we go. All right guys, here we go. So we're gonna go to File, New. And I'm just gonna click on select and select my Volkswagen uh, low poly. Everything else I'm gonna leave alone. I'm just gonna click OK. So it's gonna bring that in. And there you have it. It's it's right there. And what we need to do is we need to bake our initial textures. So we're gonna go to bake textures and I'm gonna go and click on this little folder here where I can select my high poly. I'm going to turn off ID, but leave everything else on. I'm going to leave this at 1K map size, which is OK. And we're going to click on Bake All Texture Sets. Let's give that a sec.
All right, guys. Well, there you have it. There's our uh, hubcap in the rough. No textures yet, but you can see that it brought in two shader groups. We got one and two. And because we did that in Maya, we can now easily texture two different uh, textures. Okay, so let's uh, turn this guy off and focus on this outer edge uh, to start with. Now we can choose from uh, materials or smart materials. Uh, smart materials uh, are multi-layered. They got all sorts of uh, additional uh, layers of dirt and scratches you can tweak and so forth. Uh, this looks, uh, let's say, copper, plastic, um we can take this one and change the color if you like so let's do that let's make sure we got the right layer selected up here let's uh, bring this in and i seem to recall um, hubcaps that had some kind of red color so i'm just going to go in here and uh, push that up and make it nice and red uh, it's a bit too reflective as you can see so we can uh, bump up the roughness and by doing so you see that it dramatically changes that effect we can play with that later but for now we'll do something like this and then we'll uh, jump to our second layer and turn this one off and for that I want something more maybe aluminum okay now this is quite clean uh, I want something that has a little bit more wear to it uh, we can do that manually as well, but let's see which one is best suited. Yeah, let's try this. This is kind of banged up, okay? So we're going to bring this in. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're going to turn both on. And what you would see is something like this as your hubcap, okay? Now, if you want them to have the same material, uh, obviously you can do that. You can go in, uh, let's see, take this layer here. We'll get rid of that red and we'll take the same material, possibly even looks better. And when you're happy with that, what you can do is you can go in and we're going to go in here to add a layer. And then we're going to take a simple brush. And right now the color is white. We're gonna change that to black, close that out. We're gonna go back up here. The size of the brush, you can see it here. And we need to look at the opacity as well. Let's bump that way down. And let's uh, see, we'll increase the size a bit. So then you can kind of go over and keep in mind you're painting the lower one here. And hopefully you can see that okay. So we're just uh, adding some dirt and black to it and whatnot. Okay, so that's how that works. And if you want to add the same detail to the top layer, you would go to this guy, of course. And here you can do the same. All right, now that is how that workflow works. Um, now I did specific videos on how to uh, get the textures that you've created in Substance Painter out of Substance Painter to use them in uh, Maya. Uh, but basically, if you go here, uh, you can go to export textures. And like I said, I did an entire video on that, all right? So hopefully this really simple uh, video uh, helped you to understand that flow a bit better. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.